There's a new story we've touched upon in the past, uh, a story about something called exosomes. Exosomes are little pieces of cells that pinch off as little tiny vesicles, very, so small you can't see them in a regular microscope actually easily. Uh, and these exosomes uh, were thought to be degradation products. In other words, a cell was removing a piece of the membrane and cytoplasm uh, and so that it would be broken down and the building blocks recycled. So exosomes originally thought were just a way to uh, <clears throat> remove parts of the cell that need to be replaced. But as I started to notice, many of these exosomes uh, were not degradation particles, but they actually contained information, DNA, RNA, uh, uh, proteins that would affect a cell if that exosome was picked up by another cell. So cell A releases an exosome <clears throat> with information that controls the genetics of a target cell. Most important in regard to cancer that we're just talking about, uh, a, a cancer cell can arise anywhere in the body. That's a fact, could arise anywhere. But there are very preferred sites where cancer grows, such as the liver and the lungs, pancreas, different sites where cancers seem to be manifesting. And our original thought was, oh, the cancer was created in that organ. Oh, the cancer formed in the lung or the cancer formed in the liver. Well, there's a whole new story. Exosomes are vesicles that pinch off a cell containing uh, molecules that control the behavior of a cell that will pick it up, controlling the genetics and the protein synthesis and all that. So by definition, by definition, an exosome is a virus. It carries a piece of information from cell A to cell B. And cell B isn't random, meaning on the surface of the exosome, which is a membrane wrapped structure with some cytoplasm inside containing uh, nucleic acids and control factors, uh, such as things that control the immune system, that these exosomes are information containing structures that are picked up by a cell. The cell that picks it up Again, it's not an accident because on the surface of those exosomes are receptors that complement specific cell types. So let's say a precancerous cell is forming in the leg. I go, then what? Well, we now know that those cells release exosomes. I go, yeah, but this information carrying vesicle, what does it have? Well, first of all, it's directed to a site, the liver, the lung, the pancreas so that the cell releases these information containing virus particles, I'm gonna just give it a name, virus, that is sent to a specific site, and the cells at that site pick up these viruses, and those cells then change their function based on what information was in that exosome. And all of a sudden I say, oh my God, it's called terra farming. In other words, the precancer cell releases the exosomes, the exosomes go to the site where the cancer will grow, which is not where the precursor cell is in the first place. As I said, precursor cell could be in the leg, but the exosome is directed to cells in the liver. When the exosome gets to the liver and the cells pick it up, they change their function to create an environment, terraforming, that will support the cancer cell, which is going to travel there in the future. Oh my God, a cell, in some place in the body, sends out a signal to a destination, such as liver or lung, and says, prepare the site, because this cell is going to move from where it is now, it's gonna go through the system and end up in the liver or the lung or that destination where the exosomes were. So that the exosomes carry information to another part of the body to prepare for a cancer. And all of a sudden I go, wow, then these exosomes are not just degradation things. No, these are information containing viruses that come from a cell source, but have a very specific destination. It's not accident or chance. It's like, oh my God, we, we never understood anything like this. We never knew our own cells are communicating at another level because we think in the body, communication is nervous system is communicating, but nervous system only actually contacts a very small percentage of the 50 trillion cells in your body. So not all cells are directly connected to the nervous system. Another way of commuting, communicating with the 50 trillion cells is to release hormones or you know, neurofactors that go in the blood 
And I go, well, that, that's really interesting because that is a way of coordinating the body because the blood is going to travel through the body carrying this information and the cells that are responding to the information are going to adjust their behavior based on what the hormones are. Yet there's a problem. And the problem is this. There are two very important messages that cannot be trusted to the nervous system because not enough cells are connected to it. And it can surely not be connected to hormones because all cells are going to be exposed to it. And I said, these two messages are the message to reproduce more or the message to die. If those messages go to the wrong place, a whole system could collapse. So I said, well, how do you assure that a message to reproduce is going to go to the right place or a message to die is going to go to the right cell? And the answer is, exosomes on the surface have these receptors that determine the destination and which cell is going to pick it up. So sending exosomes is one of the highest levels of communication. It's like a zip coded telegram that is being sent. Now back up. Exosomes are in the blood. They're all over the place. Uh, they're, they're, how many exosomes, if I took a blood sample from every one of you right now, I said, let's count the exosomes in your blood. Here's how many are going to be in there for the average person. 2,000 trillion. Okay, that's a big number. Okay, let's put it in, in, in another word. Two quadrillion. Well, that's, I mean, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions. That's a number that's mind-boggling. Right now, every one of us has two quadrillion exosomes in our body. But guess what? When a person has cancer, they have four quadrillion exosomes in the blood. What's the point? You can see a person is going to develop cancer by counting the population of exosomes. If they go above the two quadrillion and start going to three or four quadrillion, that's an internal message system that says a cancer is evolving. So guess what? Now we can even do a survey of how many of these exosomes are present in a body, which is indicative of a future cancer unfolding. So, oh my God, there's a test that can let you know if you're moving toward cancer. So uh, the whole idea about that is, is simply this. We go back to the family with the gastro problem where the stomach creates a cancer. And I say, before you do anything radical, like cut the stomach out, there are two things that we should be doing. Number one, assessing what is the common psychology of those in the family that get the stomach cancer versus those 25% that don't get the stomach cancer because there's a psychological input to this. It's not an accident. Cancer is not an accident. It is well choreographed, well planned. So we can start to say, well, what psychology is behind those that end up having the, the cancer? And number two, before you do anything radical, you can do a survey of the exosomes. And therefore, uh, before you cut somebody's stomach out, you can see, are they moving toward a cancer or not by looking at that population? I bring up exosomes because this is brand new in the sense of meaning of what's relevant to our lives, to recognize that uh, our own cells create viruses. Now, the problem with the word virus, as soon as you say the word virus, a lot of people get it like a stomach tightens up and go, oh, horrible, viruses are scary, viruses cause all the problems. And uh, it, it's important to note, very important, biology doesn't create something that's all bad. <laughs> well, we focus on viruses being bad, we might have to ask, is, is there a good point to viruses? And the answer is absolutely because viruses are communications that are so specific, they can be sent to specific cells out of 50 trillion. You can target a very specific cell type if you have a virus with a zip code receptor system that only identifies that cell type. What's the point? It is the most secure form of communication in a biological system, exosomes. They're new. Their understanding is just coming into the world. I need you to understand this because let's stay ahead of the curve on things. Exosomes are found. Exosomes coordinate the community of 50 trillion cells so they communicate with each other and create an environment that supports what's going on. Now, if it's a negative environment, 
then of course, then we have to deal with things like cancer and pathology. But the same viruses are very important for normal functions. I'll give you one example where this virus is so important, exosome virus, and that is this. When a woman is pregnant, recognize that the placenta and the fetus have different genetics than the mother because they represent the composite genes of the father and the mother together. So uh, fetal cells don't have the same genetics as the mother. And I say, well, why is it relevant? Because the placenta, the cells of the placenta merge with the uterus and, and penetrate the uterus. Finger-like projections of placenta go deep into the uterus where they contact the mother's blood supply and open up a passageway so blood can go from the mother system into the fetus and nourish the fetus and help the development of the fetus. I go, well, wait a minute. By all rules, the mother should not be able to get pregnant because if the foreign cells start to invade her uterus, that's the equivalent of cancer. And by definition, the mother's immune system should reject the fetus. I go, well, obviously it doesn't. <laughs> How can the mother's immune system uh, uh, be prevented from rejecting the foreign fetus? And here's what we now know, exosomes. The placental cells make exosomes, particles and membranes with controlled information that control the immune system of the mother. Inside are, are special molecules uh, that uh, are actually uh, hormones for the immune system. They're called cytokines. Cytokines manipulate the function of the immune system. Well, the foreign fetal cells make exosomes virus-like particles that are picked up by the mother's immune system. And these virus-like particles redirect the immune system to go away from the placenta so that the immune system is not recognizing the foreign fetal tissue because the foreign fetal tissue sends viruses with cytokines that shunt the function of the immune system and push it to go somewhere away so that the placenta can grow and mix its cells with the mother's cells. It's even been suggested that at term, when the baby is being born, part of it is an immune rejection, that birth is an immune rejection, that the mother's system at birth pushes the placenta away, disconnects it from the mother's uterus, and in that process engages in birth. So I wanted to introduce the exosomes because I talked about them before, but they're becoming more and more a topic of discussion. And so uh, you won't be uh, unaware of the future of what's happening in this biology once we start to recognize that our own cells are communicating with each other through viruses uh, called exosomes, and that these viruses are used to coordinate the function of the community. Now that coordination could be toward the benefit of the community, but misdirected, Exosome coordination could lead to cancers and death. Uh, so uh, all of you out there, when the word exosome pops up somewhere, you already are ahead of the curve because you recognize what they are. There are communications among 50 trillion cells where cells can talk to each other with specificity as much as you can send a telegram that will be delivered to a person that you specified only a cell can deliver an exosome to another cell that it specified. And all of a sudden we realize, oh my God, there's a higher level of communication that we hadn't even seen before. And it's so profoundly important and it's just coming into our awareness. And now you already have that information. So uh, thanks for listening to that little caveat. So uh, before a person in that family gets their stomach taken out, one of the easiest things to do is just do a survey of how many exosomes are running in the system. If the number goes above the two quadrillion, it's time to consider uh, uh, some kind of help to offset what is a blooming pathology. If the exosomes stay in the same normal level, then there's no necessary medical intervention involved at that point. So uh, new idea, old stories with cancer genes as uh, being uh, connected, uh, correlated with the cancer, but not causing the cancer. I hope uh, in some sense I shed some light as well introduce the new light 
of exosomes. So all of you out there got to jump on everybody around you. Why? You already heard the exosomes and their positive and negative roles.